What's up everyone? This is Jason with MDI and I just want to give a special shout out to Creative House Studios for letting us use this space to review our next gadget. Today we are going to be looking at the Came TV wireless remote follow focusing system. Now as you can see it comes with quite a few things. You get yourself a nice Pelican style hard case to keep everything nice and tidy. Right here we have the actual uh, wireless motor system and we also have the remote for your focus puller. They give you an assortment of gears. You get an extra 0.8 pitch. Then we also have some different ones. We have a 1.0, a 0.6, and also a 0.5. Now over here we have two adapters for 15 millimeter rods, usually pretty common with indie filmmakers because the adapter lock on here is a 19 millimeter, which is more um, Hollywood standard, just about. Now we also have a D-tap to power the motor, and then we also have a USB adapter, very standard, and that charges your wireless remote. Now there are two things that you're going to have to purchase to complete the kit. Now chances are if you were buying this thing you already have a rod support system under your camera so that you can actually hook the wireless follow focus motor to it. And then the second thing is, is you're going to need a battery because unfortunately the motor inside here does not have its own built-in battery solution. You're going to need to purchase some kind of external one that gives you a D-tap out. Now this is the ICANN IBS U65 and what you get is you get a nice little D-tap under this rubber flap which then connects to this cord which then connects to this uh, port here to power on your wireless remote. As you can see back here we have something very similar to a Sony MPF battery so if you already have a mount of some kind on your shoulder rig you can just slide that in it'll be fine but as you can see here we have some rubber bands because what we do is we just kind of use the rubber bands and we hold it against the two rods on our uh, shoulder rig and as we're going to demonstrate here in a second um, we also were able to successfully balance the whole system on a Moza original gimbal and it required us to use rubber bands to make it happen. So without further ado, let's show you how this works. So once you've set up your wireless follow focusing system to your rig, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to calibrate to the lens and that is one of the awesome features of this wireless remote system is that you can actually calibrate to a specific lens. Now I am using the Rokinon, if you're using Voigtlanders or maybe some vintage lenses, anything that has a hard stop, the easiest way is to hit the set and A button at the exact same time for about three seconds and the system will actually automatically calibrate from one hard stop to the other. Check it out. You just stay with the camera. I have the TV. And I am holding one hard stop. And it searches for the next one. And that's it. Now it knows where the hard stops are in conjunction to the remote, and you can move it freely. Now another feature of this remote is it has its own hard stops as well, just like a traditional follow focus that's um, already on the rig. So as you can see, I have it set to two points. I have my far subject of Beast Boy, and then I can slowly rack focus to the BB-8 droid. And each time, it'll hit its mark. If I need to hit anything in between, you can move pretty subtly all the way through the range and it's pretty easy to hit the focus points with this shallow depth of field. So say you have one of the photography lenses. Now one of the lenses that everyone loves to use with the GH4 is the Sigma 18 to 35, which does not have a hard stop. It's just going to keep rolling. So obviously you're not going to be able to automatically calibrate. Now there is another feature where you can manually calibrate inside the remote. It's a little bit trickier though. You're going to have to hit the set and record button for three seconds and then the ABCDs are all going to start lighting up. At this point, what you're going to do is you're going to use the C and D buttons to reach the furthest part of the lens. So you're going to have to look at the lens markings to see which part is infinity and which part is the closest focus point. So you're going to go to one end, you're going to hit the C to one end, 
then you're gonna tap the A button, and that will set a hard point there for the remote. Then you're gonna use the D to go the other way, and once you reach the furthest point on that lens, you're gonna hit the B button. And at that point, you have told the remote exactly where the lens is going to stop. And that is how you manually calibrate to a photography lens. Should you forget any of these steps, a cool thing is, is that all the instructions are printed on the back of the remote. Okay, so we actually have the follow focus mounted on the Mozwa original gimbal, and you can check it out right here. There's a little bit of, you know, we got some rubber band action going because it's completely lopsided with the motor on one side. But the battery, surprisingly, is just enough to get it to balance. So right now I have a live feed from a wireless follow focus. Not yet. <laughs> So right now I have a wireless feed from the Monswa, and what I'm going to do is without, I haven't really practiced much at all, and I'm going to see how well I can uh, rack focus on the spot with what my camera operator is going for. So right now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rack to the screen, as you can see. All right, and then he's going to just start moving and I'm going to do my best. In conclusion, all the features in this wireless follow focus is great. It comes with you know, pretty much everything you would want from a remote follow focus. Being able to calibrate from lens to lens is definitely good because you don't want to damage any of your manual lenses by cranking it past its hard stops. So it doing it automatically is awesome. The fact that you can also manually set the hard stops for photography lenses is also great because like I said, the Sigma 18 to 35 is a lens that a lot of people love to use on the GH4 and just in APS-C sensors in general. So being able to do that is also really nice. Now one thing I forgot to mention is that you can actually program four specific focus points. So if your actor is going to be moving into four different spots or less, you can actually program them and move between each focus point. There's also a little speed knob right here to see how fast you want it to move from focus point to focus point. Now there are a couple quirks with this. Now one thing is, is obviously you have to connect a battery to the receiver, which is kind of cumbersome, especially if you're using it on a gimbal. As you can see here, we've got the battery rubber band to the back of the GH4. We had to take the eyepiece out, and then you know it pretty much makes it harder to just to mount the motor itself. However, the motor again is rather heavy, and the weight is completely distributed off to the left or the right, depending on you know, which side you mount it, which also makes it harder for you to balance on a gimbal because you need a counterweight. So, you know, it'd be great to see if some way they can ma ever make the motors centered to the camera or maybe even on top of the, uh, on top of the camera itself where the body is, that makes it easier for people to balance it on gimbals or even shoulder rigs. And one little tip that I will share when doing the follow focus on the fly was, when you're moving this wheel, it seems it doesn't give me enough drag, I feel. So I actually just took one of my fingers and placed it on the metal band or this magnetic band here that you can remove, which is awesome. You can wash it. I actually placed my finger there to create the drag that I needed. That way I didn't jump focus too quickly. Um, and then pretty much the last thing, now this is just a little nitpick thing but the hard stops, when you unscrew it, it's a little bit hard to move it around. So what you have to do is you kind of have to pull up a little bit and that way it can freely swing from side to side. But that's not really a big deal. 
Um, for $780, this is really not bad of a kit. You have to get yourself an extra battery and um, that's pretty much it. I would say this is definitely a follow focus that I can recommend.